Welcome to the Designer Practice Podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Das, and I am a Canadian social worker, business coach, and private practice owner. I love all things systems, strategies, and step-by-step processes, helping therapists and coaches design a private practice that doesn't only provide practice profitability, but also the time freedom that they had initially set out to achieve. In this podcast, we'll discuss everything from private practice startup to passive income to building automated systems so that you spend less time inside of your practice and more time outside of it doing the things that you love. Let's dive in. Welcome back, everyone, for another episode of the Designer Practice Podcast. Today, we have a very special guest, Carly Hill, therapist to coach extraordinaire, who's going to share with us all about the differences between running a therapy and coaching practice and how to protect your license when you're providing both services in your business. Hi, Carly. Welcome to the Designer Practice Podcast. Hello. Thanks for the fabulous introduction. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. It's so great to have you here today. I've I've been so excited for this episode. You're actually the very first guest I've ever had here on the podcast. And it's definitely an extra special treat to have you here today. Thank you. I feel so honored. (laughs) We've been in contact for a while now, and we've chatted in depth about the differences between therapy and coaching and how to integrate them into our practices. And you have some amazing insights to share today, don't you? Yes, absolutely. I'm an open book. So we can talk with about the difference between therapy and coaching. That seems to be the biggest thing that people struggle with. Yeah, for sure. So before we dive in, though, you know, please introduce yourself, where you're from. Tell us a little bit about, you know, who you work with, what your specialty is, really anything you want to share with our listeners today. Yes. So like you said, my name is Carly Hill, and I am a LCSW turn coach, turn spiritual energy healer, turn business coach for therapists specifically. So my MO is really helping therapists start and grow their online coaching business so they can earn back their freedom and flexibility and security that we really deserve as agents of change. And it's a kind of funny journey how, you know, I got to this position, but I'm a firm believer that we're here to teach what, you know, we have struggled with, right? We have to learn and walk ourselves through things so that we can then walk other people through it. So it was really my own struggles in my my private practice with marketing, sales, niching, uh, sustainability, and craving more freedom. And I was like, I got to crack the code and I got to figure this out. And I also had a massive realization that I was doing coaching the whole entire time. I wasn't even doing therapy with my clients. So one thing led to another, you know, investing in business coaching programs, doing my research on the difference between therapy and coaching. And now it is my full mission to help therapists make this transition or add coaching if it's in alignment with their goals. I love that you said that, you know, we are here to do what we've been through, because I think that's something that I've noticed from, you know, working with therapists in private practice is sometimes we're afraid to niche down or work with people that we are driven to work with. And almost always, it's either ourselves that we want to help or a loved one or someone that we were close to. And usually that's what our niche ends up being. And I know for me, that's also been the case, both as as a therapist working in workplace burnout, I've experienced workplace burnout, but then also again, my business coaching is because I wanted to help others with what I felt that, you know, I had a gift in and, and a drive to do. So yeah, I love that you highlighted that piece. Yeah, I would say we're, most powerfully positioned to serve the people that we once were. Yeah. Right. No, I agree a hundred percent. 
Now, today, what we're going to talk about, of course, is therapy and coaching. And it's really one of the questions I get asked a lot in my business coaching is, you know, what is the difference between therapy and coaching? How can I incorporate both in my practice ethically? So let's dive right in and, you know, tell us what is the difference between, say, running a therapy practice, running a coaching practice, and how can we integrate them together? So it's a loaded question. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to break it down and you just stop me and ask questions in between. So I'm going to start off with the definitions that I don't like about therapy and coaching, because if you Google it right now and you're like, what is the difference between therapy and coaching? You're going to get some textbook boring answers. That's like coaching is working with the present and the future. And therapy is working with the past. And that's just one that I don't agree with because, you know, as a therapist, as a coach, we talk about the past, present, and future. You know, there's a lot of things that say coaching is very goal oriented. Well, you're creating goals in a treatment plan with your therapy clients, right? So the easiest definition that I always say is therapy is treating medical necessity Coaching is working with a non-clinical, more situational, less severe problem. That's a beautiful definition of the difference between, you know, therapy and coaching. Now, why might someone want to add coaching to their therapy practice? Well, sometimes, like myself, you have a realization that you're actually doing coaching instead of therapy. And depending on where you are, because regulations are are different, which is a whole nother story we could go down. Like people are the same, right? But the regulations are different state by state, country by country. And province by Some province. Some people, <laughs> yes, exactly. So, you know, where you are limited by your license, you, if you're truly doing coaching, you don't have to be limited by your license. And that's one reason I see some people move, right? And then it's hard for them to get relicensed. And then this thought pops in their head, well, how can I still help people, right? How can I still be an agent of change without having to go through all of that again? Or maybe they're wanting to impact more lives and reach people nationwide, worldwide. Or maybe it's just about them leveraging their time and creating uh, a course, right? Or it's tapping into the group model instead of doing one-to-one and trading dollars for hours. So there's many different reasons, you know, sometimes people are just burnt out on the like trauma, really clinical, it's heavy work, you know? So sometimes it can be a breath of fresh air to work on a non-clinical, more situational problem. No, I agree completely. And I love that you added like the course piece in it, because it goes into that passive income that we talk about here on the on the podcast a lot. It, you know, I believe that passive income, which digital courses, memberships, digital templates, anything that you can, um, you know, put more work in up front, and then can help build additional income into your business so that you can start stepping away from just doing the one to one and always hitting that income glass ceiling. Yeah. I like to call it leveraged income, right? Uh-huh. Like do the work up front and, and it's leveraged, right? And I with a course, that. you can be paid to create it. You can be paid to build an asset in your business that can help you reduce your hours. Yeah. No, that's yeah. beautiful. So what steps would a therapist, and and I do want to clarify for our listeners that you are in the States and as most of my Mm -hmm. listeners know, I'm I'm Canadian. So I think this is a beautiful podcast because we kind of have two kind of worlds showing up here. So from your knowledge, from working with a lot of people in the United States, because we do have listeners from the United States here, what steps Mm -hmm. should therapists take when adding coaching into their existing business? It's like if I came to you and I said, you know, I would like to add coaching, what would you tell a therapist? Well, I would first ask you, like, why? Why do you want to add coaching? Because I think it's very important. Like, what is your driving factor? Is it because you want to leverage your time, get paid for your knowledge? Is it because you want to create financial freedom for your family? Is it because you want to impact more lives and you have an itch to do so? Like, your why is always your driving factor. And I'm always just curious too. So 
I think it's important not to bypass grounding yourself and your why of why do you want to take this step, right? But then also, like logistically speaking, it would be filing your business entity, you know? So now we are kind of getting into protecting your license a little bit, but it's the very first step that you have to do, especially if you have private practice already established, you have to create separate business entity, especially in the States. Like you can't have it, you can't slap coaching onto your therapy practice. Yeah, here in Canada, it's similar. And like I said before, every regulatory body has different rules and expectations. Some regulatory bodies have specific regulations regarding setting up professional corporations and what the scope of practice is within that professional corporation entity. So what you're sharing is, is to have two business entities, one professional corporation for therapy and another business corporation for coaching. Exactly. You nailed it. If you can remember anything, it's separate. Just keep everything separate. I love when I can share free marketing resources that can help you grow your practice. Open Path Psychotherapy Collective is a nonprofit organization that partners with therapists in private practices across Canada and the United States to provide affordable therapy services to clients in lower or middle income families. Open Path provides a professional therapist listing that generates referrals for practices at no cost to therapists who partner with them. You heard me right, absolutely no monthly subscription fees. When you sign up, you agree to provide a sliding scale to clients found from your Open Path profile, up to $70 per session for individual counseling and up to $80 per session for couples or family counseling. If you're interested in signing up for a free Open Path professional profile, check out kayladas.com forward slash Open Path. That's kayladas.com forward slash O P E N P A. TH. Now back to our episode. That would be the first step. And then the second step I would say is figuring out your niche. Who are you helping? How are you helping them? Why do they want to come see you? Why are they going to urgently and eagerly pay you? So people are always buying their way out of something, not into something. So you don't want to just have like a a nice to have course or be an addition to somebody's life, although that can be helpful sometimes. When we're talking about having a booming, viable, marketable coaching niche and coaching business, you have to get hyper specific on who does you help and how you help them. And what's the big solution that you're getting them to? And sometimes that can take a long time to figure out. No, I agree. And I think even when it comes to therapists, not even adding coaching, niching sometimes is really scary for therapists Mm because they think that they're excluding people. But I always say we're including people because exactly what you just said is is people want to buy something that's going to help them with a specific problem. So they want solutions, strategies, support related to that specific issue. And if you niche, then you have a lot easier time to give those specific strategies and even market yourself to that person or your ideal client in that respect. Yeah. I call it um, being the Beyonce of your space. If you want to be the Beyonce of your space, you got to niche down, right? And if you try to be everything to everyone, you're going to be nobody to no one. And you're going to fall on deaf ears. It's like marketing yourself as a professional multitasker. If you had a loved one who lost someone and they were looking for grief support, would you send them to the grief therapist or coach who also did, you know, play therapy and sex therapy and blah, 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 or the person who specializes in only grief work? Agree. And of course, people would want the therapist who specializes in what they're looking for. Exactly. Yeah. So you might have already touched on some of these things, but what considerations or what steps should a therapist take to protect their license and registration when providing Mm -hmm. both services? Yes. So yeah, first thing is keep your business entity separate. And then, of course, insurance. So typically as 
a therapist, we have malpractice insurance. As a coach, we'll have professional liability insurance. If you have brick and mortar, then obviously you would have general liability insurance. So getting the proper insurance is important. And that would also typically be separate. So sometimes it's known as errors and omissions if it's not known as professional liability insurance. The next thing that's very important is your coaching contract. So we're still held to our ethics. Mandated reporting and informed consent are two things that must be on your coaching contract. Right, so we're not losing our therapist title or identity just because we're adding coaching. The other thing to remember is do not take a therapy client to a coaching client or a coaching client to a therapy client. So you have to keep them separate. It's hard for a therapy client to unsee you as their therapist. So this one gets very nuancy because you could technically have like a recorded course alone with no coaching aspect. And you could absolutely offer that to your therapy clients as an addition. But you would need to have something in your paperwork that releases the power differential that says that they do not have to purchase said course or essential oil or whatever it is in order to get results, right? I love that you added that piece in because when we think of adding coaching and therapy, and I'll use my my own journey, it's sometimes really great to have two different, somewhat different niches because of that dual uh, relationship or potential of dual relationship, right? Like when I look at my therapy practice, I work with people experiencing workplace burnout. Whereas in my uh, coaching practice, I work with therapists building, you know, their practices. So as a result, they're not too different. They're all career oriented and, you know, supporting people with that, but they're different niches that they're highly unlikely and to date has never overlapped. Yeah, good point because social media is another thing that gets nuancy with protecting your license, right? Because you never, let's say, for example, someone does have the same niche within their therapy practice and their coaching business, but they're treating them for PTSD and treating them for medical necessity in their therapy practice. But in their coaching practice, they just help people boost self-esteem and get back into the dating world. Yeah, maybe they came out of a toxic relationship and they could be meeting criteria for PTSD, but they're not treating them for that. Maybe they have a separate therapist who's helping them with that, right? So technically they do have the same or very similar niche of nature, right? This could get confusing with marketing yourself on, let's just say Instagram, for example. Like, are you going to have private practice Instagram and coaching Instagram where you're posting the same exact things? Or are you going to have just one and that's going to be your coaching Instagram, right? So then what, do you have to hide that you're a therapist? No, you don't. But it's not like hire me as a coach because I'm a therapist. And you never want your client to be confused about the services that you offer. Yeah, the stigma's gotten better, but a lot of times coaching is much more appealing to people when in reality, they are a better fit for therapy. And I think it's also important because regulatory um, requirements change state by state, country by country, province by province, is to really also understand your own specific like, regulatory requirements regarding dual relationships or the potential of dual relationships or conflict of interest and all of those things that could kind of fall within or be perceived to fall within that. Yes. So with that being said, best practice is to always consult a lawyer. And the beautiful thing is there's plenty of attorneys that work specifically with therapist turned coach because there is so many nuances and complications with this. So I could sit here and tell you the basics, but I do always recommend that everybody does their due diligence, check with their board, and best, best practice is to check with an attorney as well. That's great advice for sure. Yeah, I think with anything in our businesses, if ever in doubt, ask a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, you can never be too careful. Yeah. So Carly, I have one more question before, uh, you know, we leave today, you know, do you have any stories, examples, insights, anything that you can share with our listeners about adding coaching to their existing therapy practice? Yes. Uh, I don't even know where to start. I have guided hundreds of women through this process of adding coaching. I will tell you, you know, majority of the women who add coaching keep their private practice and they love therapy and therapy is their baby, right? But their intention is to reduce their hours in their practice and introduce more financial freedom into their family's life. Uh, more location freedom or just flexibility. And many therapists have spoken to the fun, creative process it is to add coaching and be able to, especially if you were your own ideal client, like share your story and how you walked yourself through it and why you're so passionate about walking other people through it. And even creating a course around it. Like you get to pour your heart and soul into something that is very close to home. So I would say just on a general sense, it is, it's fun, it's creative, it's thrilling because it's something new, which can also be a little scary, but we know excitement and fear shows up neurologically the same way in our brains. So don't get it mixed up. So, wow, the content you shared here today is so valuable. I know it's really going to help, you know, my listeners who have been wondering, like, this is a common question. Like, how do I add coaching? Am I already doing coaching? Um, Should I add coaching? And I think Mm -hmm. the information you shared today will really help them, you know, move forward in, you know, adding coaching to the therapy practice with confidence. But you also have a goodie to give to our listeners today that takes these concepts even a step further, don't you? Yes. So tell us a little bit about your freebie. Yeah. So I have many freebies. So when you asked me what I wanted to give away, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know. How do I choose? I have so many resources. So this is one of my most popular ones and it's very simple and straightforward. That's how I deliver all of my content. And it's the three simple steps to adding coaching. So literally one, two, three of what you need to do. Amazing. So if you want to download Carly's three simple steps for adding a scalable coaching program to your therapy practice, head to kaladas.com forward slash Carly Hill freebie, or you can simply scroll down to the show notes and click on the link. Carly, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today and share with us these valuable insights about adding coaching to a therapy practice. Yes, thank you so much. I loved it. Oh, we loved having you here. So thank you everyone for tuning in to today's episode. And I hope you join me again soon on the Designer Practice Podcast. Until next time, bye for now. Please be advised that the podcast advertisements and links in this episode may be affiliate and or sponsor links where Evaspare Inc. and the Designer Practice Podcast receive compensation for sales or signups made through link clicks. This helps the Designer Practice Podcast continue to provide free and valuable content to you each week. Thank you and we appreciate your support.